Hello everyone, my name is Dorian and welcome to Suzuka. We are with the F3 and I'm just going to show you guys the lap real quick and then we're going to go over it corner by corner. If you enjoy it, leave a like and if you want to see more track guys and race videos, then subscribe to the channel. I use the baseline setup, the one that's for the Fix series. It's perfect. Don't touch it. Just drive. See you guys on the track. So we're coming up to turn number one. Let's look for a turn-in point. Obviously, we don't break here uh, on the initial turn-in. We got the access route here on the left, and that's our turn-in point. Staying flat out, sixth gear. And as I get close to the darker stuff here, the rubber on the curb, I'm going to lift and start to break very, very, very gently. So around 40%, 35% slowly downshifting so now into fifth now into fourth letting the car run wide and you can see i'm um, starting to trail brake more and more so reducing the amount of brakes i'm using and now into third very late so as late as you can into third because we want to be in third for the shortest period of time on the brakes you want to start accelerating out of third uh, so trailing the brakes into the inside curb and as I can see the car is pointed towards it I'm just gonna slam on the on the throttle And stay committed the whole way through Very hard to do on the first couple laps. You're gonna need to wait a little bit till the tires warm up And in the meantime, just be a little more gentle on the initial throttle application uh, Now up into fourth gear and we're gonna stay in fourth gear throughout this sector so flat out or not flat out actually you can take it flat out but i like to take a small compromise here just to make my life a lot easier on the right hander and you know subsequent corners so around 70 percent 65 percent and now as i straighten out the car it's very important to clip the inside curb here by the way it just gives opens up the next corner which makes a big difference after that and now I'm just going to lift all together, sli slide the stab of the brakes, and turn in the car. And as I do, go back on the power. So I'm going to squeeze it all the way to 100%. As soon as I straighten out the wheel and start turning left, I'm going to lift again. So basically, the throttle here is what's going to help me rotate the car bar barely on the brakes. And turning to the left here, I'm trying to clip the red part of the curb. Don't touch the green stuff. It's an instant spin uh, it will spin the car so you want to be as close to it as you dare you can go around it more you can you don't have to be this aggressive on the curb but you know might as well if you can do it as you can see i'm i'm not i'm modulating the throttle a lot only now committed to 100 percent again and turning right i'm lifting again and trail braking down into third gear so you'll see that i'm staying on brakes for quite a long time 
staying on the inside here there's tons of grip you don't want to let the car wash out at any point on entry mid corner or exit you just want to be on the inside here you see it dabbing the brakes now down downshifting to third dabbing the brakes again just trying to maintain the front end making sure it stays tight and starting to accelerate out again i'm using the inside curb to rotate me so if i feel like under power if i feel like the car is washing out i'm going to use a little bit more of the inside curb to rotate the car and as i open up the wheel back to 100 percent you can see i'm in the middle of the road here that's exactly where i want to be every time definitely don't let the car wash out here even on cold tires you might feel like you don't have a choice make that compromise because you'll gain it all back and then some on the exit here and up into fourth gear especially first lap you really want to lift here but uh second third lap onwards no need even when drafting you just take it flat out try to take it tight on the entry and stay tight the whole way through just take a nice short route and we're up into fifth gear here and we're gonna stay in fifth for the turn in so on the 50 i'm gonna turn in the car lift and dab the brakes slightly that's going to give me some weight on the front just to make sure everything is nice and consistent you can actually just lift here i don't find there's any difference in time but there's definitely a difference in consistency so a lot easier for me to do it like this every time with just a dab of the brakes and i'm going to clip that the outside of the red curb you don't want to go in on the inside here you definitely don't want to reach the green stuff make the car bounce and going back on the power as soon as i finish it you can see i'm taking it almost to 100 percent and then i'm hesitating a little bit because i want to try i'm already thinking about setting up the car for the next corner so i don't want to let it run wash out i don't want to let it run wide here at all you can see a little bit of a modulation here with the throttle and now i'm already starting to break so thinking about the brakes very early you just want to prepare the car there's no breaking point here so i i, I can't tell you you're just gonna have to figure it out it's a sequence if you do it this corner right you're, you're gonna know immediately when to do it as soon as i open up the wheel i'm already preparing for the brakes and peaking around 45 50 percent downshifting all the way into third gear and i'm starting to turn in quite early i got tons of camber on the inside here and that's going to help me accelerate very early as well when i clip this inside curb so i don't have to clip the outside curb on the exit now i'm already back on the power so you can see i gave it all the way I, I i smashed it all the way to like 70 percent then i wait a little bit and that's a crucial point if you wait a little bit more uh, like i did then you're not going to wash out as much here and that's really going to help you uh carry a lot of speed on the straight here because as soon as you mount this curb uh, and you put the left side of the car across the red and white curb and over on the astroturf car is going to beach out and it's going to lose a lot of straight line speed obviously if you exceed that even more you'll get an off track but you can try to abuse it with a gt3 car with anything that's taller than nf3 you can actually take this as a racing line and put the car on the left here but with this car you just lose too much time so i try to mitigate that by you know waiting on the throttle a little bit up to 70 and just waiting on it a little bit longer now flat out into the right hander and again not a real breaking point i have this light pole here it's kind of helpful to know where i'm at on the track but obviously i'm going to break a lot earlier than that um basically as soon as i straighten out the wheel so soon i stay on the inside as soon as i start to straight out the wheel i'm starting to break and uh you can break a little bit later than that uh but it's a little, a little less consistent and there's not a lot you can gain maybe half a tenth but I, I just like breaking a tiny bit earlier than what's possible here. Uh, 70%, 65, downshifting all the way into first gear. Right now we're in second, downshifting just now into first. You can use this corner in second. I'll show you on the exit uh, why I use first. So you're trail breaking all the way to the inside here. And I'm going back on the power to around 50%, squeezing it to 50% and waiting on it waiting 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 opening up the wheel back to 100 percent slamming it now this is all in first gear now you can do it in second gear the problem with second gear is you're gonna overload the rear tires that's that's that will be the tendency at least with the setup 
And I feel like with any setup, you're going to overload the rear tires and you really have to modulate throw on the exit to prevent that. And obviously it'll require more concentration, more skill. So uh, basically to avoid that, as soon as, if you use first, as soon as you reach the limiter, that's sort of the point where the rear tires give out. So you reach the limiter and that prevents the car from, from, you know, from snapping, from oversteering wildly on the exit. So I use first, it reaches the limiter, I, I can feel the rear end wanting one to let go, up into second, and it's just very smooth on the way out. I'm pretty sure I'm not losing any time for it, uh, maybe, maybe half a tenth, but probably not. If you, if you time it correctly, the upshift with the, with the limiter, it's going to prevent the rear end from sliding, you can be very aggressive on your return to the fall, as I was, and uh, yeah, it's, I think it's the better strategy for a race at least. From this point on, I'm just staying on the inside here, taking a nice short route, and we're gonna look for a breaking point. So usually you'll break here, but with an F3 car, you want to break very late. So right around here, you have, you can see that it, there's a patch of dirt that's starting right around here, but it becomes more significant right around this area, and this is where I break, I think. Yeah, so right around here, you're not looking at it though. You're looking here, but just as a reference. And the peak is very low, 30%, down into 5th, and late into 4th, right around here. So only, only on the apex where I'm putting in 4th, I'm just, I'm just trying to carry as much speed as I can. Trail breaking for a very long time, you can see I'm still trail breaking past, quite a lot past the first apex. And now I'm going back to the power, just maintaining my mid corner speed, I'm treating all as one corner almost all the way to 100% and then starting to break again again I'm not not peaking very high 30% just trying to keep the car stable you can see it's dancing around a lot and I'll show you that in the sequence and downshifting to third trail braking and as I'm close to the curb I'm gonna be pretty aggressive on my return to the trial because it's gonna rotate the rear end just a little bit and I can lean on the rear a lot here on the exit you got enough speed so the downforce is keeping you nice and safe and staking the car all the way to the outside. Let's take a look at it uh, in slow motion. You can see how much the car dances here. So I'm closing the, the wheel, opening up again, closing the wheel, I'm constantly using the brakes. It's not a very, I wasn't very smooth here. It's very difficult to stay just very smooth and committed to one angle. You're gonna need to make a lot of corrections, micro corrections with the wheel, with the pedals. Just to keep the car and, and where you want it to be. Stay on the inside here on the exit and then going to the right. And here you want to stay on the inside. You don't want to open up the wheel here. There's just no point. This is not a corner for this car. You just want to take a nice short route. And we're going to break right at the 100 for the final chicane. You can break later for sure. Uh, I don't know. I guess I didn't want to mess up the lap. So it took me a while to figure it out. So. Uh, you can break a little bit later. I, w I would maybe break here if I'm brave. But I already started breaking right at the 100. And peaking pretty high. I think it's the highest peak uh, on the circuit. So around 80%. Gradually you can see me releasing it as, I, as the downforce drops off. All the way down to second gear. No need for first. Trail braking. You can see I'm already off the trail brake. So definitely more speed to carry here. Break a little bit later. And I'm mounting this curb. You don't want to mount it too much. This much is fine. So basically, the right tire on the edge of the red and white curb. You don't want to fully mount the green stuff. And I'm going back on the power as the car is about to land. Just to stabilize it. Put some weight on the rears. Because I'm still asking for a lot of turn in. I don't want the rear to snap. I just want it to stabilize as quick as possible to set it up for the next corner. So I got some weight on the rears now. And as I straighten out the wheel, I'm going to lift and put all the weight in the front again. That's going to help me rotate the car into the second apex. And this one is a little softer, a little lower of a curb. So you can, uh, you know, you can cut it quite a lot. I'm, I'm going all the way on the green stuff. And as you can see, up to 30% with the throttle. Open up the wheel slightly. Up to 70%. Open up the wheel some more. Up to 100. Using all of this Astra turf on the right. That's really crucial. There's a lot of time there. You can see it on the Delta. And uh, I've, I'm happy I found it because that's the time I was missing. 
And staying on the inside here the whole way through, take a nice short route. That's an extra half a tenth. And that will give us a 151 115. Hope you guys enjoyed this track guide. If you did, leave a like. And if you want to see more track guides and race videos and stuff like that, then subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video. Bye bye.